Hi, I'm Jess. I'm Piper. I'm Chris. And we are Coffee and Scream. Everybody, welcome back. Hello. Oh, hey, hey, hey. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you guys both looked at me at the same time. Thanks for like, joining oh. us, Chris. Oh, yeah. thank you for having me. You're welcome. Yes. How was everybody's week? Uh, pretty chill. Pretty yeah. chill. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys yeah. do anything? No, I just watched a lot of TV and movies. <laughs> Did you watch any Christmas movies? Or have you been trying to get in the mood? No. You haven't really? put on the 12 days of Christmas or 25 days? Like, like I'm not going to like get too like venti or anything like on the show, but Boo. like Christmas won't like really won't feel the same this year. So I'm Oh, you, like, got a, you got a case of the where are you Christmas? No. It's okay. <laughs> She's been listening to Christmas shoes on repeat. Don't do that. <laughs> that that's terrible. <laughs> that's bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I've had whams last Christmas like playing on a loop in my head. Do, 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 like I'm do, trying do, to do. sleep and I'm like. Well, it's been a year. Oh, I'm like, so God damn it. Um, I love George Michael. Yeah. Who's the other guy? Was he Wham? Who was Wham? Uh, um, I don't know. Was the guy named Wham? I don't I don't think it was. It wasn't? <laughs> okay. Um, Did you watch anything? I watched that movie, Violent Night. The Is uh, that the uh, Hopper? Yes. That's a as, good one. As Santa Claus. Did you see that? I did. Yeah, and I, I think this week is going to be Krampus. Mm-hmm. Okay. You no, know, because um, I was telling Rib about it. He's like, "Well, we were gonna watch this." He's like, "That looks good. Maybe we'll just say that for next week. We might as well mm-hmm. just stick with the program." So and, and you actually, didn't finish it, so you. No, I did, and I honestly like I, I digested a lot of it, but it, you know, it's gonna be like in my face, so it's right. gonna be it's gonna be fun with the headphones, and I'm immersed. You can't and, draw while you watch it. Exactly. This time, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, but um, I watched it, and it was actually um, it was Isn't, pretty dope. I was surprised. I, um, I liked it. it. Wasn't that bad? The um. That one like, isn't um, the fuck's her name? Beverly D'Angelo. Yes, she's, she's in, in it too, yes. right? Why does she look so fucking familiar? She's the mom in uh, Christmas Vacation. Okay, that's where probably I know her from. But she looks almost like um, not the lady from Cujo. Uh, maybe that's who I'm confusing her. I, I think you're confusing her someone with from a horror movie. Um, D. Wallace. D. Wallace. She was. I know uh, Wallace and Gromit. You know Walton Gromit? No. Really? No. Okay. It's like a claymation show from Britain. Okay. You ever seen it? It's I like know what you're talking about. You sick. I don't know. Who is, who is Dee Wallace? Who the fuck is she? Dee Wallace is, uh, she was the mom in E.T. Okay. She was also, she's been in like a ton of shit. I've probably seen E.T. once in my life. She was the I was mom a big in Mac Cujo. and Me kid. She was in also in yeah. E.T.? Yes. Oh, cause she was also in Critters then, because I'm pretty sure she was I in Cujo so. and Critters. I think so. I don't have her filmography in front of okay. me. Okay. Well, Violet Knight was 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 fucking. It was uh, fun. It was pretty interesting. Yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. Mm. And John Linguizamo, I, I mean, I uh-huh. like he's underrated, honestly. Like I love him. Yeah, he's great in The Pest. I know that's mm-hmm. like one of the worst movies ever, mm-hmm. but that's like m- his version of The Room to me. Well, I gotta I, tell you, being uh, like I came of age at like when I was like eleven or twelve when. Uh, Romeo and Juliet came out and I was torn between, I was like, am I on the good side or the bad side? Because yeah. like, I was like, what were the, what were the families, the Capulons and the No, the Capulets and the Montagues. I was close. Yeah. Monty Hughes. Yeah. When we read that in uh, English class my freshman year, mm-hmm. the class was divided into like the two families, like the Montagues and the Capulets. And we had like mm. l- like a whole like battle to like who, who, whoever won the most points by the end of the unit got like an ice cream party or something. And my team won, but yeah. we felt bad for the old team, uh, for, for the other team. So we let them join in. We were oh, like, that's that's, spo- that's sportsmanship. We, we, we were like, I'm so wholesome. Like, I could puke. I would just been, yeah, like, and, and, and like, and like the what? Oh, my this, ice this cream is so cup. good. <laughs> and then it's the, so good. Yeah, I'll have more hot fudge. Thank you. Because the because <laughs> the because the one kid on my team was like, it'll be like the story, like how they came together after like Romeo and Juliet yeah. died. 
Yeah. Uh, that's well, sweet. I don't think I mean, they were sharing ice cream after that. Yeah, though. true. But I don't think like, they're like, oh, they, they were like, it'll be symbolic. And you I, I'm what? like, and I was just like, okay. All well, the just teachers like, are huffing sure. and puffing because now they got to yeah. fuck over more fucking money for more ice cream because they got the lose. They got to feed the losers. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, let's see. Oh, I I also watched things. Oh. Ew. Yes. Was I the did movie watch... called Things? No. Okay. I watched Talk to Me. Uh-huh. Finally. Oh, really? I oh, yeah, did. We talked about this. We yes. did. We talked about it at work. I really liked it. Um. You haven't seen it yet, Piper, right? No. Okay. Um. I've been too busy to too busy it's, rewatching it's things really... I've already watched. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I liked it a lot. It's not going to be something I watch probably Mm -hmm. ever again. That's true, honestly. Like I I don't. Like Like, I would watch it with someone. Like now that I know, like I'm like yeah, I'm good. Mm -hmm. And like the like the brutal parts were a little too brutal for me. Like I I like horror. Don't get me wrong, but like I'm not like over the top gore. I, I can't handle it. Like I'm like a baby. Yeah. I'm like eh, I sat with my hand covering the TV screen, like my my vision, mm-hmm. till I knew it was over. <laughs> um, but besides that, I like I go through phases where I either I hyperfixate. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm either watching only true crime things, or only comedy, like stand up or whatever, or only ghost shows mm-hmm. or whatever. Well, lately it's been discovery plus mm-hmm. and during the day i was watching a um let me see i have I, do you have my note you're yeah. watching a uh, blue planet no earth three no um it was a show david attenborough i watched the two climate. episodes of this one show right and it was called Wait, hang on. Hang on. Oh, it's, it's called Find My First Love, right? Uh, now, on listen, Plus? it's so stupid. Ready? It's like, say you're dating someone, you break, okay. like, for a couple years, whatever. Like, oh my God. Mm-hmm. Like, I it's love so you. Sweet. I fucking love and then, you. Tw- oh my God. <laughs> okay, I'm Stop. going. Yeah, then you guys break up and. I, I'm had enough. Yeah. 10 years goes by, 20 years goes by. You don't know where this person is in the world. Well, they hire this private investigator company to find these people for them. And to then reconnect? They, to like, like, hey, it's me. Remember me? Remember oh me my God. God. I would get a restraining order so fast. I'd be like, uh, and there's a camera crew. And I'd be like, what Which, the like, fuck is this? I know. Where's reali- the big check? I know reality TV is not always what you see yeah so like i wonder if these people get like a heads up to be like are you do you want to be on it or not like this person's looking for you yeah. but some of these people like yeah i'd be they're on a out. plane like going overseas to find somebody what and the then fuck? Have, it's crazy. bananas i watched two episodes and i'm like no. part of me would feel like the biggest fucking loser to be yeah. like can you find this person i would like but it's also hire context. a bodyguard like if, if that ever happened to me if i was on the receiving end of that shit I'd be like, nope. I would be scared. Like, like, I, like I need a whole secret service next to me. So I was yeah, exactly. like, I gave up on that because I was like, oh, that's a bad idea. I feel like that kind of thing is only romantic if it's like a woman's looking for the guy. It's, the guy's looking you for know the woman, what? It has to be like a crocodile Dundee situation. I'm trying to think the episodes that I saw, it was a woman looking okay. for the guy. And the success rate was like every episode. Like when they would check back in to update. They just never said no. Well, would you be flattered if some girl from a long time ago was like, oh my God, you're the one well, that got thing. away? I don't well, know. That's I the feel, thing. It depends I feel like on the context. It's creepy either way. Like, uh, I don't know. I don't I, I don't think I would like it. Yeah. Like, don't, like, don't like, do that. It, it's, just like, it's just like we broke up but for also, a reason. But also, you don't know. Like, <laughs> what if this person has a whole ass, like, family? Like, oh, the person uh, you're looking for? Yeah. Like, what if they have, yeah, like, a, a spouse and them. kids and, like, you just come in and start shit? Like, like homewrecker don't, style. Yeah. I don't know. Um, and, but I, you know, moved on from that because it gave me the ick. And then I started. Yeah, episode three, you're like, no. I was, no, I was just like, ugh. Ugh. These you people. You can't even watch this. <laughs> yeah, this fucking lady. <laughs> um, but I was watching the show also. It was like Obsessed Dark Desires. It's about stalkers. Oh, Jesus. My favorite part about the entire show uh-huh. was the reenactments. Oh my God, those are so great! The acting, I should get a job you like really should making he dramatization. Could, couldn't he play Stephen McDaniel? I could totally yes. do Stephen. Does I don't it, even know who yes. he is. Yes, he, uh, he, the Lauren Giddings uh-huh. case. 
Brian you and I talk a about, blazer. Brian and I talk about it all the time. Here, actually, I don't need this anymore. Why don't you pull up a picture of Stephen McDaniel's and yeah, let's show. see if we, yeah. let's see who I can be or the like the little like, like the little interview. He's like, like yeah, there was like a, jogging my memory. He he was the one who like he found out that they found her like on, on TV on, on air. And he's like, oh, right? I got to sit down. Yeah. Um, yeah, Brian and I talk about it all the time. Okay. This case and like because he's always they ask like, come on, Stephen, we know this. He's like, no. Yes. <laughs> or he's like the, the detectives are like Stephen, were you stalking her? Were you doing this? He goes, no. Like he barely flinched the entire time. A, holy fuck! It's it's who terrifying. is this guy? I don't know, but this the bitch. yeah that guy. Oh, I oh is that the axe guy? No, that's not the axe guy. No. The, okay, wait, let me see his face again. It's like the worst picture ever, but like. Oh, I think I remember seeing this video though. I thought for a second I thought it was the hippie. I probably axe showed you. Hitchhiker. Um, but yeah, like the stalking show. Jesus. Some of them are crazy and so scary. Mm-hmm. It's always, you know, it's obviously. Yeah, it's. Uh, that's why I'm like. But uh, this one episode, I fell asleep today. I was like, I had it on, and I was like, "Fuck!" Because I fell asleep, and I wanted to see how it turned out. But it's like this lady moved into an apartment, and through the wall, she could hear her roommate just like screaming constantly, just like, "I will destroy you!" Or, like, "I'm gonna kill you!" Ah, and just, and she's like, "Well, I was thinking, you know, maybe they're rehearsing for a play, and like, I don't want to." Yeah, so, like they're no, rehearsing honey, for Macbeth. No. So eventually she came into contact with this person on the sidewalk. It's like another lady. And the lady's like, she's like, I really like your doormat. And the lady's like, oh, thanks. I got it. You know, at the home goods store. Like, I don't think she's like, I'm going to get the same one as you. The same one as you. We will be the same. Like, it it was like, oh. Excuse me? Yeah. Then this lady, like, like, woke up one morning and she could hear the the crazy neighbor, like, masturbating through the vent Ew. just like but the acting was she was she go, was she like aiming for the vent she was like or was face she just was pressed against the vent like just i'm not gonna make noises <laughs> i don't i think like, believe me but she's like uh like the other lady has like her pillow over her head just like oh my god that's like stop. it's like a chinese water drip torture but she's like you she wanna... wanted me to know that i heard her i'm she's like i was gonna you know try to start shit but i'm not gonna you want to know it was what, just that, crazy. what that reminds Time to leave. me of the fucking people that hide in people's attics and like come and like eat their food at night yep. that's so and weird everything. i'm like what the fuck that's is wrong with you but an unknown was... person yeah but like, i don't i don't know how this episode ended i'll have to watch it but i can't imagine anything good it's just bananas it really oh, no. that is crazy even yeah the attic thing i remember seeing a video oh someone yeah s- like, like uh, you see a like video. a door open and also you see a foot come down yeah yeah yeah, yeah. drinks the milk from yeah. the car Ugh. Ugh. A fucking what a nerve. violation he's in like a white gown or something and it's just like whoa oh. like i knew i didn't eat those cheez-its yeah it was no, like, I f- it's a plant Ow. Like, i would have like, filled that like, milk like, jug full of piss no yeah so yeah, that's what I've been doing. False lately. milk. Just watching <laughs> stalkers, stalkers and, and people stalk the people that got away. Yeah, it yeah, seems like there's a, re- it's a recurring it's like, theme. Yeah, it's it's mm-hmm. come full circle. Yeah. And then I watched Beauty of the Beast this morning, Which, and I was thinking, I was like, does he shit in the litter box? Like, yeah, that's <laughs> a good like, question. Like, she's like, well, what's up in the West Wing? Oh no, 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 don't go in there. Yeah. Why? He's like, my litter box. I like, said out. <laughs> Yeah, like he's just dragging his ass across his carpet. Like just the sound. Can you imagine a sound? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't. I can't. Imagine. <laughs> there's no. And I was just saying, like, like kicking the litter out of the box. There's no fucking way he wipes. Like a hairball, just like. <gasps> <gasps> yeah, just. But do you think he wipes? No. He probably doesn't wipe, right? He doesn't. After he, well, like, I don't think. After no. he like turns into know. like a human at the end of the movie, what if she's he like, has Ugh. like weird body dysmorphia, so he has like a fucking fur suit. Yeah. Made or something. Yeah, he's like, like, he just unzips. Like, he just unzips. <laughs> he's yeah. a fur, yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised that. Or movie... imagine she's like, mm, mm, mm. No. no. She wants she's him like, a beast? Yeah, she's like, mm, I'm kind of like you the other way. Yeah. Like, she's like, oh, you shaved? Like, ugh. <laughs> yeah, was, I haven't watched that in years, it though. It was bigger before. Okay. It was bigger. <laughs> <laughs> it was red, but it was bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes the lipstick. Okay. Oh my god! Um, That's in the deleted scenes, by the way. What did I rewatch? <laughs> Sorry, yeah, check the DVD, the Blu-ray. Uh, special features. What did I rewatch as of late? Oh, uh, I rewatched Birds of Prey today. That was fun. Is it the um, Harley Quinn? Yeah, where she like breaks up with the Joker and she's like on her own and everything. Doesn't she have like a pet hyena? 
Yes, and she names it Bruce after Bruce Wayne. Really? Yeah, she goes. She 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 goes. She goes after Springsteen. That would have been funny. <laughs> yes, she, she, she goes like word for word in the movie. She goes, and I named him Bruce after that hunky Wayne guy. <laughs> is she into him too? Like, is she does she flirt with like Batman and shit? Well, her character like always does, and like I and, think like, she's what, down. She's a, she's a whore. She's not just down to clown. She's down. She's down around. For, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Is that what you were going to no, say? No, I think she likes anybody. Down, down to frown. She's just, yeah. Well, her whole thing she's that down. movie was she's to be down. like... Period. She's just down. Yeah, down period. What were you saying? Because mm-hmm. her, her whole thing that, that that movie was to be like, I can do things by myself. Because mm. like everyone's like... Because everyone, especially at the beginning of the movie, is like, you're the type of person who can't be on their own and everything. And she like, And she's like, no. Like... I can be that. Is that before she I respect Joker and stuff? that. Is that yeah. more? I was looking up a video two nights ago on how to because... fix my oven. <laughs> it, yeah. I was like, hmm. That's if a... I could fix this, I will be unstoppable. It's almost, it's nowadays, it's rare to find like a problem that you have. Like, mm-hmm. I took an... auto in high school. You I did? Didn't, mm-hmm. I did. You found out how pistons work? I sure did. Also, I, I'm like, also, I love Margot Robbie's like per- portrayal of Harley Quinn. She's so good. I love her. Like, 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 and then, and then, uh, and then in the newer Suicide Squad movie, um, <laughs> she, 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 um, what was it? Like the Prince of Spain or whatever. The, the, the president of Spain is like in love with her. So like he, he like seduces her into like being like his first lady or whatever it is over Uh there and like and she's like and then she like shoots him at the end of it because she like picks up on red flags she picks up on red flags and she goes and after i broke up with my first boyfriend i vowed to myself that as that, that as soon as i saw the first red flag i would do the healthy thing and i would murder him (laughs) yeah Jesus Christ. I didn't see... I, I'm not really like a superhero. Uh-huh. I don't even know the last superhero really movie I watched. Either, but mm-hmm. I, I love like the Harley art. Quinn. Jack Kirby. I love Jack Kirby. Mm-hmm. And David mm-hmm. Finch and Bernie mm-hmm. Wrightson. Shouts out. Oh, I also wanted to... As I'm chewing, which uh. is funny. La- I was listening to last week's episode with headphones on. Uh-huh. And I could hear me crunching. And I was leaned back, but... I'm so sorry to people <laughs> that don't like that sound because I get it. Yeah. It gives like people just like, ugh. I got to take the crunch plug in off. You kind of do. It turns up, it turns up all the crunch frequencies. Like I'm chewing on a cherry Twizzler right now. Yeah. So it's not. I can't believe as, you like those. They're so good. Listen, they're not terrible, but I'll, strawberry, I would, that's Twizzler. Strawberry Twizzler. doesn't taste like strawberry. Strawberry Who tastes gives like a fuck? Nothing. It's still flavor. It's still a good I, taste. I don't dislike it i will eat it i will just Je- changed my life when she introduced me to cherry twizzlers i'm gonna grind Thank my you. teeth You're into welcome. a powder um <laughs> don't do that don't do that the only fucking go nuts. ones i won't fuck with is the black licorice because mm. it's just gross mm. i haven't had like black licorice, licorice like in a long time mm-hmm. but i've had like absinthe and stuff you might like it yeah i might yeah. i can see you liking it yeah. also be very is, on brand for you this is so? the first yeah. episode Cinemold. in like a couple of weeks where you i haven't have. finished my coffee before we started that's recording. amazing yeah. right mm-hmm. look at you mm-hmm. uh, i i character slow development. and steady small because usually i like freaking she pounds that thing so fast i know that, like, I, I get brain freeze watching if it's you. a cold uh, drink <laughs> Yeah. I, for some reason, I feel compelled to slam them. Like I just really? almost never yeah, put me them down. Too. Yeah, because also I feel like um, the second semester of my senior year, uh, the second period, I had um, digital photography, mm-hmm. and we had the really expensive computers in that class. Did you have to buy so, the camera for the class? Because I did. Oh when no, I went. we had oh, okay. like cameras that we were assigned like numbers really? to and everything. Okay. Yeah, um, but. Since we had the expensive computers, we couldn't have any beverages that were that were like open like this. Mm-hmm. So I had to like train myself to like suck down my iced coffee during study hall during first period. <laughs> I'd be like, Do you have like, yeah. any idea how many times I've spilled either a cup of coffee or a full can of ginger ale onto the the keyboard at work? Oh my god! All the time. All I spilled time. I spilled many a beers. Like I was just there, like I'm uh, I have missed my this. mouth completely. <laughs> At all times, I have at least two to three active beverages. Like yeah. when I go to bed at night, because like I don't actually go to bed. I just lay there for mm. a few hours just thinking. Me or too. Actually, I, I get a little elevated 
And then oh, I yeah? mm, sure do. Pills. And then no. <laughs> I'm kidding. Animal. <laughs> um and then I just like play games on my phone or, or watch something or whatever. Um but I always bring in with me a seltzer water and a nice coffee and sometimes a ginger ale. Depends. Okay. And I just rotate between the three. I usually have like a beer and a fucking second drink, like water or fucking Gatorade. Yeah. But uh it's like now, like this show, it's like, yeah, it's like three drinks I don't usually. Know why. It's like a beer, it's a fucking coffee. And I've then... heard it's a I sign don't know of why ADHD. I do this. Could be. Huh? I don't know why I do this, but I like dehydrate myself until I leave the house. Until your piss is yellow. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> until it becomes sl- like gelatin. Ew. <laughs> Ew. The I'm water like, left in your body. I'm like, like. I don't eat and I don't drink anything until like I leave the house. Sometimes I'm like I'm Hear gonna that? see how long I can last. Yeah, put it the closer to the mic. Let beautiful me, ice coffee. That. Oh yeah, that sounds cold. Purchased by yours truly. Yeah, I'll, thank this you. Is how cold it sounds, it sounds like <laughs> my cold brew. Yes. Are you doing blizzard? Blizzard sounds. Oh, do it again. Do it again. <sighs> Oh, there's Twitter in Antarctica. <laughs> I think there is. This is where the headquarters is. Oh yeah. But yeah, it's so funny. I'm like, it's it's it's, it's like a little endurance test for me. I'm like, I'm gonna see how yeah. long I can last. Like Joey Chestnut food or water. And then, the opposite. And then like, depriving. oh, I thought she was then, talking about the. Uh, I thought she was talking about the sucking down the coffee thing. I don't know. And then, like, and then like, <laughs> and then I like get a headache at the end of the night, and I'm like, I wonder why. Wonder why you have a headache? Yeah, because I haven't well, eaten yeah, or gotta, drink gotta anything drink. that day. <laughs> you gotta make sure you have like little small snacks because sometimes I notice like if I start to get, I'm like, why am I so anxious? Why am I? I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, because all I've had today mm-hmm. was nicotine and caffeine. Yeah. <laughs> like, have some pretzels, have a little bit of ginger ale or mm-hmm. a little bit of seltzer water or regular mm-hmm. water, whatever you want, and then you'll mm-hmm. you will feel like feel much better. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what. When I was driving over and I was going, yeah, I was I went to Wawa and like the whole time I was driving, like there's just like dickheads on the road. Yeah, and I was just like this fucking piece of shit. Like mm-hmm. go. Mm-hmm. And then when I ate, I was like, I think I was just like having a moment. I think I was just well. Hungry. Now you got a lot of Snickers bars. Yeah, so. like oh, yeah. too many. Yeah, I thought she was fucking with me at first. No, no. Yeah, take them all. Jesus Christ, I can't. That'll uh, be my dinner. <laughs> I'm kidding. Boy my my boy dinner. <laughs> Snickers uh, eight Snickers bars. Speaking of us, sn- uh, speaking of Snickers bars, uh, Jess and I have an inside joke at work. I won't go too much into detail if no. I can't. Um, uh, but yeah, we have a inside, an inside joke, joke at work. Snickers bar. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to reveal anything else because yeah. we don't know who listens or who. Does. Yeah. Pipes. But. Anytime one of us has to go to a store, we always go, do you want anything? We always go, Snooker's Bar. Yeah. It just. Oh. <laughs> um, if, Excuse me. It was, I was trying. Um, that was the most legendary thing ever. I'm sorry. <laughs> if if anyone would like the full story, uh, email us no, about it. If anyone wants the full story, go to <laughs> Coffee and Scream Pod on Instagram and DM Yes, that's, uh, I will tell the Snickers that, bar story. That is, that is, yeah, that's Piper on there, or oh, yeah. I'm or on Twitter on it's just G. Um, Cause, cause but actually, like, don't DM me. I don't, I don't just don't. Because like Jess is a Twitter <laughs> fiend. Don't. Just don't do it. Because like Jess is a Twitter fiend. I am an Instagram fiend. Mm-hmm. So, yep, <laughs> yep. And Chris is on Facebook with the other moms. Listen, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the I'm making, moms I'm, and mamas and aunts. I'm making the transition slowly. Are you? At my own pace. Being Magical. a snails. Your pace or, is, uh, it's so fucking slow. It's like you're going backwards. Um, I got a like lot he's of, on yeah. MySpace I got now. a lot of stuff I got to move over. He's on MySpace. Like, look at our little. I have uh, a lot of stuff. He still frequents Rotten.com. Yeah. <laughs> is that still I even up? I used to love that. Yeah, girl 4chan I if you want to see anything yeah, fucked so up. Creepy. Freaking 8chan. Right. <laughs> well, tonight... We're going to do something a little bit different. Yes. Normally, it's Piper and I mm-hmm. telling Chris a story. Mm-hmm. But we hope you guys are hungry because Chris brought along some creepy pastas. Yes. And yes. honestly, and you might be thinking, oh, here we fucking go, Jeff the Killer. I assure you, you've probably never heard of these mm-hmm. and they're worth a listen. These and are you know what? I've some never of heard my of favorite. Them because I don't partake. And they're not all creepy pastas, you know, uh-huh. but like that's kind of like a blanket term for just. 
Mm-hmm. But one of these, mm-hmm. I would consider, like, truly one of those. Because one of them, like, no one knows who wrote it. It was just anonymously posted. And it's, like, one of my favorite stories of all time. And it's, I no one really has any information on the guy that I was researching earlier. And I couldn't really find much on him. Mm-hmm. And there we? was forums about how other people could not find much on the on the person, he or she or whatever. Should yeah. we give it. a definition as to what a creepy pasta is for yeah, folks some... that don't know? Yeah, I just I don't off of what I know. Mm-hmm. They're just you know, like a made up creepy story. They're just like an online yeah. horror story. It's like a mm-hmm. rather than writing a horror story and publishing it on paper, it's like a digital story yeah. that was made to kind of just like they're be just viral. For fun. It's yeah. like it's it would like take, it would take over threads and stuff. It's like mm-hmm. if Stephen King had an online personality yeah yeah if you use a like, laptop like instead of a typewriter it's where slender man came from yeah, yeah like the the slender man have you ever seen marble hornets yes I've, you've seen the marble hornet that stuff, right? series has the most special little place in my heart <laughs> i love i just love like Aww, you gotta, you gotta it. see it's like it's like i don't even know the how to describe operator it. like low budget like documents or almost mm-hmm. like video uh-huh. diaries of this guy who's Essentially well, being stalked by Slenderman, but it, like Jesus. back in the day, like oh. I was in like middle school and high school, yeah, and I remember watching it. Like, what the fuck is this? Like, mm-hmm. it was it was so Have different. Have you creepy. ever played the Slenderman games? Where you I had played I uh, the original one. The original saw, one. Yeah. I saw a vi- like a YouTube video of someone doing a walkthrough of it. I was uh-huh. like, yeah, no, fuck that. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember playing the one where you're like in the school. I, uh, like, I only played the first one, the one where you're like just mm-hmm. on a campground. There's like a, it's like a campground. Mm-hmm. I think like that, I think that's the original one, like yeah. in, like in the woods and everything, sanitarium yeah. or some shit. I think so. Yeah. Um, th- there were like so many fucking places where the, where those games took place, like uh, school times three, and then fucking like there, there, was, there was a one. Costco one. Yeah, I think to, so. You have to get out of Costco. Yeah. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get the Costco membership. <laughs> yeah, you have to get the Sam's Club to get out. It's just him standing in the doorway. <laughs> He wants to see a receipt, <laughs> <laughs> and you don't have it. You're like, no. <laughs> you, you're, you're at you're at fucking uh, Sephora. They're asking you if you want to use your birthday gift yet. <laughs> I'm spray you right in the eyes with a fucking with the new Billie Eilish perfume. Yeah. Oh no. Um, but but like I was saying, creepy bosses. He's the bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just okay. Towering over you with perfume in his hand. Oh no. Um, okay. He's like. <laughs> but like there's like slender man was he's like a great uh like a horror trope very long limbs and usually horror is like exaggeration horror and comedy are so similar where mm-hmm. comedy is like all about exaggeration that's why when cartoons you know smack each other in the head with a hammer it's always huge it's always like the loudest whack you've ever heard everything's exaggerated when someone's scared their eyeballs like lift and stretch sounds like the taco bell bell like yeah, like boom. Boom. <laughs> yeah. or though even ring, yeah, it's all about exaggeration. And horror is the same thing. And usually, you know, features on a human naturally, if you exaggerate them, it becomes mm-hmm. scary or it becomes yeah. funny. Depends on how you look at it. Mm-hmm. Like if someone has got really long legs and a really small torso, that's fucking hilarious. Mm-hmm. But if it's in the dark under a street light, like you that's don't want to, you don't want to see that. Yeah, because yeah. horror is subjective. It's uh, like it is and it isn't because there's some things that universally scare everyone, mm-hmm. like regardless of the person. Yeah, like, you know, like heights, like death heights scary and shit, most like people probably. The ocean. Yeah, yeah, the ocean. Yeah, it's like the unknown, the dark, like just the deep ocean like just Mm -hmm. yeah yeah is it the fear of the unknown or is it the fear of like the the not understanding probably the fear of probably both yeah definitely because like the like the age-old saying like people fear what they don't understand but like also like but also i feel like unknown and like not understanding (laughs) is like i don't know what they are like i I, I don't even think they know (laughs) i think their government knows because because i feel like not knowing and like not understanding is like mm-hmm. one in the same like they go yeah. hand in hand because how can you like understand something that you don't know of course and so so i feel like it's already dead yeah so it's just like i feel like both of those factors go hand in hand because like no one's really scared of like like kittens yeah because they think they're adorable and they're like, mm-hmm. oh, they I like, like, oh, I know, like, you're so cute. But like, what if they have AIDS and they're chasing you? They can't. You can't get feline AIDS from a cat. Why does it sound familiar? Because it's a thing. Feline AIDS? Yes. There's no fucking way. Yes, mm-hmm. it is. I thought that was like from a South no, Park No, if you have show. a cat with feline, like, that's tested positive for feline HIV or AIDS or that's whatever. F- yeah. They, they does that can... mean it was like with a monkey or is that no, like a... No, I don't. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how. That is like so sad though. It is, but like 
all it pretty much does is like you just have to be careful mm-hmm. with um needles well yeah, that too but like only adopt other animals that also have hiv yes yeah and it's just like if they get they can get sicker faster or whatever like, it's not that's crazy my sister uh, one of my sisters had two cats with feline hiv that's fucking horrifying and, and yeah it's not it's not like they cannot pass it to plasmosis no okay. not at all not at all yeah because it's because it's like a different string that only yeah. they can catch yeah it's just that toxoplasmosis show we'll talk we don't even have to talk about this, this isn't a biology podcast but that shit's <laughs> crazy like what it does to the biology yes, of like a, mou- a mouse a mouse like worms in your brain well, well uh, so they say that apparently it's harmless that we know of I don't but know. it what it, i'm it, still using that as an excuse to not change the litter box the scary like, that's not my no, job the scariest thing honestly well i'll just say I you're, you say you're pregnant forever right. Right? Don't they say, like, if you're pregnant, you're not supposed to change the litter box and stuff like that? Yeah, you're not supposed to. Yeah, it makes sense. But I was going to say, the craziest thing about that, I'll keep it short, Mm -hmm. it breeds in mice, apparently, that I know of. This is what I've heard. Yeah. It breeds in mice, and it actually, like, changes, like, its brain to the point where it gets attracted to the scent of cat piss. Really? Normally, it it would have an aversion to cat piss because cats are natural predators to mice. So, it, like, attracts... But does the cat have to... I don't know. It eats it eats the mouse and gets the virus and then. But what if your cat has never eaten a mouse? Well, it's not. Yeah, then it probably doesn't have it. Mm-hmm. Okay, because yeah. I'm pretty sure none of mine ever have. Are they like harmless cats or just let the mice go? Well, like Scarlet, we got from someone. She like was their outdoor cat, mm-hmm. had babies, and that was Scarlet. Um, I don't think she spent any time at all outside. Um. Let's see. Mickey came from a foster. I don't think he was outside either. I think he was born in foster care. Mm. Um, Billy was found outside at a day old. So I know yeah, he doubt. he was the size of a mouse. Mm-hmm. So he definitely didn't eat one. Yeah. Uh, the baby. He was the size of a mouse. He was. Red yeah. was tiny. He was maybe like six or seven weeks old when I got him. He was outside. But like... I don't think he could have killed a mouse. Like he was so yeah. tiny, what, underweight. What, for what his would he age. have been like, eating? I don't know. I don't know no. what he Did was they eat, eating. Like, blue, they don't eat blueberries and shit, right? No, that'd be cool. No, he probably like if anyone like, hopefully someone was throwing food outside to feed him. Yeah, like garbage. Scraps. He was so he was in such bad shape. I would. He was so under. Cat. He was so underweight. His one mm-hmm. eye looked like it. Like I thought I was gonna have to have his eye removed. Um, I would love to get a cat, but mm-hmm. like I get so stuffy around them. They're on like, you. Get a hairless yeah. one. Yeah. No, they still I, they still make dander. Uh, I like um, need to freaking more dander for the gander. Worth it, Piper. It's worth it. Worth it. <laughs> no, and like poor little red, like he had like a upper respiratory infection. Like when uh-huh. I the first night I had him, like this poor kitten could not breathe. Like he had just and shit. snot coming out of him. His eye was all fucked up, and I was it was my birthday, and I was eating like pasta that night. And I, the only thing I can get him to eat was a noodle. So I call him, <laughs> I call him Ready Spaghetti. That's so awesome. So I was trying to get him like, where's Skeddies? Like, Ready Spaghetti. Yeah, come you on, Skeddies. Like, he's that's, such a... That's adorable. <laughs> yeah, that's the history of all the cats. Okay, let's get into it. Feline, you know. yeah. That, speaking of feline AIDS, I got, yeah. some, I got a, one of these horror stories is actually about feline AIDS. No, uh, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I, I don't know any of these, so I want to okay. guess what they are. Yeah. Oh, okay. You, thank you. Yes. For, okay. okay. So... Uh, we kind of already talked about this one, mm-hmm. but Mother's Call. Mm-hmm. What do you remember from that story? I dread it every time it happens. A mother's Call. Mom. Oh no. Oh. Cut you to the core. Okay, we're not talking. No. Oh, we're not talking about childhood trauma. No, no, but, we're not. Uh, I mean, we can. No, no, I don't Are you want okay? To. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I'm only kidding. I am great. I am. I'm just I'm, fine. Shut the fuck up. I need to go home. <laughs> no. Um, a mother's call. Is that the, that's the one where it's like, mom, is that well, you? Yeah, well, don't, yeah, don't, don't spoil okay. it. Yeah. Okay. But that's, but that's the one. But then why'd you let me go on? Because I said we already talked about it. I know if you still wanted to like I make know, a playful want... guess and right, just, fuck just with the Just go audience. ahead. Mm-hmm. All right. This one is called The Mother's Call. All right. And this is um, one of the shorter ones, but this is like conceptually one of my favorites. It is such a great way to boil uh, things down, cut a lot of fluff out and have a really horrifying concept without a lot of bells and whistles and stuff mother's call a young girl is playing in her bedroom when she hears her mother's call from the kitchen so she runs downstairs to meet her mother as she's running through the hallway the door to the cupboard 
under the stairs opens, and a hand reaches out and pulls her in. It's her mother. She whispers to the child, Don't go into the kitchen. I heard it too. Huh? That is... Fuck me, man. What would you do? I'd shit my fucking pants. I'd shit right on my mom, probably. (laughs) She's... No, seriously, though. Like, that... I don't even know what I would do. There's something about, like, mimicry. Like, if if I got lost somewhere... And, you know, I was with one of y'all or we were just all three of us were walking somewhere. You guys go down a dark hallway and I'm just I get lost. And now I'm in the dark alone. And then I hear your voice like, hey, hey, Chris, over here. That's fucking that is like and you don't know if that's them. You don't know shit. They're just telling you to go into the dark. Uh huh. I don't know. That fucks me up. It's probably because, like, I'm, like, like, I, like, we were talking about, like, how nonchalant I am, like, mm. bef- like, off of mic before we started recording and everything. But, like, honestly, I don't, I, I feel like I wouldn't have much of a reaction to that. I'd just be like, okay, fuck you, I guess. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going back to my room. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that Lana Del Rey is not going to listen to itself. She's like, you just called mom. me. I'm gonna go listen to Evanescence and cry. Yeah. <laughs> but like the scariest thing to that, to me in that situation is like, the mom is like that bitch heard it herself. Uh-huh. Like she heard her own voice. Uh-huh. So and even she, she was like, she think about this before the daughter went to the go see what was going on. She's probably already hiding in the fucking cupboard, mm-hmm. shit in her pants. And then saves her daughter's life. Because I also have like a, if I die, I die mentality. Because if I die, there's not much I can do Listen, after that because I'm already dead. But this like, is the thing. <laughs> it's not about the death. It's about every, all the moments before you die. Like, is that the horror you want to witness bef- in your last moments? Like, that's fucking crazy. Probably it's not about death not. itself. Like, if death is universal ideal, and death is death. But like. Oh my God. <laughs> awesome. but, but like. But like in the if in the situation I did get killed, like there is nothing I can do after that. Of like I not. am dead. So yeah. like, well, oh well. Like if, getting shot. Like, <laughs> if she's like yelling from the kitchen, like come here, honey, I'd be like, fuck, like I left my Jesus thing down there, or like I wanted to go down and get a snack or a drink or something. Like, like I just came now upstairs. we can't like leave the upstairs, mom. Mm-hmm. We're stuck up yeah. here. Well, no, no. Thanks when she lot. went down the stairs <laughs> in the store, when she went down the stairs to go into the kitchen, she was in the cupboard. Oh, no, 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 So no. she was, like, fucking close. She's probably close to that fucking whatever it was. Because imagine just be sitting there, like, humming, and you're cutting carrots, and then you hear your own voice call your own daughter. That's not you. And who fucking knows what time of day it was? I'm getting the tears. Are you getting well, the She's fu- starting to cry. I don't know what... I, know. I, know. I have a tissue. You do? Yeah, I'll take I my, might, I'll might take my little, Twizzlers off of it. I'll do, I'll do the 60 minutes dab. Okay. You know, yeah. the old dab <laughs> Don't ruin your mascara. I, it, I don't want to wreck it. Okay. What's uh, the next one? The next one. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm sure you guys have heard of scary stories to tell in the dark. Oh, yes. I fucking love that shit. Now, this isn't a creepy pasta. I have pasta. those still. We should... You should read some of those I, one day. I yes. have the bo- I have the book with all three. Me that too. I got when Me I was too. Like I got it for my school. my oldest when she was. I remember. I, love it. I remember being like uh, every, every other kid being like, "Oh my god, the pictures are so scary!" And then I'd just be like, "Heh." <laughs> I heard the movie. Yeah, I heard the movie. Mouth. That good. <laughs> yeah, like the the movie was just like an uh, almost like a, an amalgamation of a bunch of stories. Okay. You know, and mm-hmm. I understand what they were trying to do with it, but I yeah. saw I saw bits and pieces. The the one dream sequence, like the story, the dream, mm-hmm. where it's like that, f- like f- I can't even, I don't even want to say flat face. That sounds way too. Uh, but she's got like a very flat face, and she's like chunky, and she's got like really stringy, thin. Black Is that hair. that like the naked lady that's yeah. like uh, kind of like uh, she's like heavy, she's like little little chunky. It almost looks like like Jabba the Hutt with like legs. Yeah, you know kind of. But like, and she's I got like know a really what... thin lip mouth. Yeah, 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 I know exactly which one you're. They, they use her in the trailers a lot. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yes, the, the, that that's the one where I was just like, hey, lady with a big mouth. Like yes. <laughs> the story. Is okay. Well. So what is the next story? <laughs> the next story. This is one of my favorites from Scary Stories to Tell in Dark, and I feel like this story too is not like a lot of the other ones. It, it feels like they made it. It was written by I think Alvin Schwartz who was the uh, the author who did all the stories, and then uh, Stephen Gamble did the art. Mm-hmm. This one is called The Thing. Ooh. Okay. This one I love this one. Do I get okay? And I have a, if you want to see what the art the the actual illustration looks Ooh. like. Yeah, this Ooh. Yeah, I love that. So sick. 
That's iconic. It's amazing. And I would have that like framed in my house. That'd be yes. so sick. I love I, like surreal art like that so much. It's he would so, do like charcoals and he would like blow. That, that, that looks me. like something I have out of brush, like a brush pack and procreate of that looks like something brushes. out of like a Courage the Cowardly Dog episode. Yeah, like. Dude. Ugh, here we it go really again. Does. Ugh, iconic. <laughs> here Not like, kidding. Like, <laughs> uh, okay, so. All right, the thing. Yes. Ted Martin and Sam Miller were good friends. They spent a lot of time together. On this particular night, they were sitting on a fence near a post office, talking about one thing and another. There was a field of turnips across the road. Surprisingly, they saw something crawl out of the field and stand up. It looked like a man. But in the dark, it was hard to tell for sure. It's a skinwalker. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> as quickly as it appeared, it was gone. It's Dr. Phil. <gasps> what you need to do is... <laughs> what are you thinking? What are you uh, uh, thinking? Uh, Help me. <laughs> but it soon appeared again. It walked halfway across the road, then turned around and returned to the field. Then it came for a third time and started toward them. By now, Ted and Sam were scared, and they started running. But when they finally stopped, they decided they were silly and childish. Tickle fight? (laughs) (laughs) Stop it. You're so silly, Ted. You're so so silly, Sam. Sam. Stop. You're my best friend. Sammy. (laughs) Okay. Promise we'll always be friends. (laughs) Forever and And ever. Ever. Uh... I'm so sorry. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. (laughs) Pretty soon, they saw it, for it was coming to meet them. It was wearing black pants, a white shirt, and black suspenders. Sam said, I'm going to try to touch it. It's a Mumford and stuff. Then we'll know if it's real. (laughs) He courageously walked up to it and peered into its face. It had bright, penetrating eyes that sunk deep into its head. It looked almost like a skeleton. Ted took one look and screamed. So he just looked like me? When I wake yeah, up. Yeah, it looked like you in the morning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ted took one look and screamed, and again, he and Sam ran. But the corpse-like figure followed them. When they got to Ted's house, they stood in the doorway and watched it, appalled. It stayed out in the road for a while, seeming to watch them in return, but once more, it vanished. No more than a year later, Ted grew horribly ill, and the sickness killed him. Toward the end, Sam sat up with him every night. The night Ted died, he looked just like the frightening thing that they had encountered a year before. Ooh. And for a children's book? That is pretty good. Terrifying. Right? For a children's book? And dude, if you guys could see what I'm looking at, it looks almost like a Christopher Walken. (laughs) Um Christopher Walken, it's like a charcoal ink drawing. The thing. (laughs) Who fighters? Isn't that fucked it kind of does. It's a little walkingish. A little I, bit. He looks yeah. like that that one the crow. picture. Crow walking as a crow. He looks like that one picture of uh, Eric Dessler. Who the fuck is that? Uh, the Phantom of the Opera. That's his name. Oh, the classic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I see what you're saying. Totally. I mean, honestly, that that like, like, the, like might like be a the reference. Hollowed out eyes and everything. Yeah, he's got that fucking yeah. big ass like. Like almost identical, if I'm recalling from memory correctly. I honestly love uh, the classic Phantom of the Opera. I uh, love it. Just that classic, uh, and then the one with Emmy Rossum. Is that the one with um Gerard Butler? Yes, that's a good one. I saw that. I think I have that on DVD somewhere. I love it. Um, let me see. This one shouldn't take me too long, but I really want to get to the piece de la Resistance. Okay. Right. So I have I have another one. Actually, you know what? We can do. We'll do one more short one. I got another short one that I really love. Okay. And then we'll get into the longer ones. All right. Okay. Okay. Now this one, I love this one. Do you? Because this kind of touches on, um, it's so weird. There's so many classic like horror tropes Mm -hmm. that are never touched nowadays. Something's in the closet. Something's Mm -hmm. under the bed. What the fuck happened? Well, that, yeah, that's seriously what happened. Classic things for a child. Yeah. But like, yeah, even like. But even as an adult, like if I. If something reached out and grabbed me from underneath my bed, I would simply have you pass seen, away. That's insane. Have like, you seen those pranks melt. Melt. of like the girlfriend hiding under the bed and like grabbing her boyfriend's that's foot or up. something? Or even that's like the be- even up. when they switch someone out, like someone that's like you know, like when they did it to uh, uh, April Margera, 
Yeah. Remember when Phil got yeah. swapped out with someone, mm-hmm. or Preston Lacey in Jack, one of the Jackass movies? Mm-hmm. And you just wake up, and it's like, you can't really see. It's the dark. It has like a similar shape to the person you remember, yeah, the no. person you love, and it, you don't know if it's them. Even oh, like just God. those videos, like I've seen like, like compilations of like women just jumping out. Like, trust me, I love to jump out and scare mm-hmm. people. It's one of, of my course. favorite things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to do it like to the, like over and over again to the same person is kind gonna, of fucked up. That'll fuck yeah. them up. They'll start swinging. They'll, no, they'll like, eventually break. Yeah, like that's like psychological warfare. Yeah, I don't like that. Like that's that's a little too much. Just no, like no. once a year. Like, aha, enough. I got yeah. you. Like, but in, uh, not even at, like, Halloween time. They'll see that coming. Yeah, you, you got to catch them on, like, But also day. not, like, enough to probably kill them. That's too much. You don't want to stop be... their heart. No. I it's, remember it's... seeing an episode of Maury where some, like, lady. That's scary. She like, scared it's... her kid, like, fucking around, playing around. Like, her kid died, apparently. What? Like, a fucking heart attack. Yeah, I remember watching it on Maury. No, like, not. Oh, I saw a thing. Remember also, that? there was a lady who was like running a daycare or something, and she would dress up like a witch, like, put this witch mask on, and terror. Actually, I think it was her grandchild. She would terrorize this kid, and like someone filmed it. It was awful. This lady got in so much trouble. Oh but my it is, fucking god! This, it was I like would a little lose girl. My mind. I would like. I yeah. would be in this cell over. Yeah, me too. I'd be in the fucking cell, and I'd be trying my best to look around the corner into her cell. My eyes I'll would be find, stretching around the I'll corner. I'll try to find the video for you to show you. It's, I don't even want to see that. I, I trust you. I, yeah, that makes trust me, me fucking sick. I, like, I watched it and I was like, no. That's probably why I, I don't, don't have kids because I'm like, already fucking to, nuts. To do that to a little, little kid? No. Is like, like no. my kids, like you have to scare them like age appropriate, like to be funny. Yeah. This lady was doing it to be yeah. mean. You scare them like I'm going to come tickle you. Like, like yeah. Like, that's like, that's to, what it should I, be. I pretend I'm going to eat some piggy. Like, oh, I'm going to get you. Give me those toes. You need to wait until they have like the like the skills to be able to comprehend that oh you're fucking with me yeah dude i only like well some yeah well my daughters um a couple summers ago they were going to camp in the backyard and they were in the tent and had the fire like we had a fire pit going for them and everything Mm -hmm. i had a mud mask on and i walked around my house through the side gate and walked up behind the tent to where, like, you could see through. It was, like, a mesh window. And I was just watching them. Oh, my God. And, like, eventually I leaned in. And my daughter was like, I heard you coming. I was like, God damn it. Oh, <laughs> like, she knew? Yeah. Damn I was like, it. Oh, You're like, oh, man. Damn. Damn. She was like, you have to practice your sneak. <laughs> I know. Your I sneak know. stat. I know. I, get, I, I wasn't as stealth as I thought. but It happens. It's, you know what? That's fine. You got to buy some it's new okay. shoes. They Fire still ended there. up sleeping inside the house because they're like, I don't like bags. I need to check my phone. It's too hot. Yeah. <laughs> Mom, I was sweating. I remember when I got a new tent, like a new full-out tent. Like, I had to sleep over with my buddies. And I was like, can I sleep in my tent? I just got this new one. I want to try it. And I just literally slept yeah. in this fucking yard, this That's, backyard. You could sleep in this yard all you want to. All right. My parents would love it. I'm still too many. Cook, I'll be cooking. I'm, I'm still too, like, mm-hmm. ugh, about bugs to sleep in a tent. I'd have to, like, if I ever went co- camping. I'm too afraid of I'm... Jason Voorhees coming yeah. and, like, ripping me out in a sleeping bag. I love eating no. a handful of mushrooms no. and laying in the I would dirt. Just, I would it's, just give him food. I would just give him food and be like, it's okay, wants, Jason. I don't think he wants that. It's, I would be like, it's okay, Jason. I love you. He's it's like, your right. shorts aren't slutty enough. <laughs> <laughs> Punches you. Yeah, does he, I don't even think he kills uggos. Does he? Uh, does he kill, like, the uggos? I don't think thinks so. yeah he's got a i know well i knows. think it's like i think it was like a prerequisite he's like got if, a type if you were gonna be a camp counselor in the late 70s mm-hmm. early 80s you had to if you look like farrah fawcett you had yeah you had to you had be to like at hot. least an eight yeah yeah yeah. like they're like come on because who's running the place how are you gonna teach a kid if you're ugly yeah <laughs> yeah you're gonna get you're fucking gonna lunch lady to go give kids cpr fuck you're, that yeah you're gonna teach For that their kid, sake. you're gonna teach that kid how to do the 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 butterfly stroke? No. Nope. I don't think so. Uh uh-uh. uh. I don't think so. Yeah. Why do you think the water's so cold? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Why? Do you, okay. Oh. Uh, um, I was gonna say, why do you think they let Jason drown? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Get him out of here. No. <laughs> imagine. I'm imagine. Sorry. Imagine what if he was. Poor just, little boy. No. Imagine I'm if he was. So bad. You should have been watching him. You should have been watching him. Um, imagine if he was just very well endowed. Stop. And it. everyone drowned him because they're like, he's gonna. Get him! Get rid of him! We gotta kill him! Stop! Like a competition? To, yeah, to save the save the ladies for themselves. And now he's back for revenge. Like can't but, little baby arm Voorhees yeah. over here yeah, like, yeah. around these girls. Yeah, kickstand Voorhees. <laughs> kickstand. <laughs> I can see it. He's like uh, fucking twelve feet tall, man. Okay. Oh Jesus. We always like yeah. We always go on. It's all right. Inappropriate. It's fine. 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 We're, We're all adults here. 
We're a yeah, family. when you're here, you're family. Yeah, warning. Like do the, not follow anything you've like heard the in the show. Like the fucking Sopranos. Like the Olive Garden. Oh, uh, <laughs> we also have never-ending Twizzlers. Yeah. Go ahead. <sighs> All right. And not, not strawberry. Not Hold strawberry. On. Which is called original, by the way. Hold on. Cut, the, cut this out. But like... You're so original for liking but, them. But, 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 yeah, yeah. But I hit my nose, so you there's not going to be a spike in the audience. I can see Can't it. Wait. It actually went off the screen. Remember this it's sticking. <laughs> What? Did we get work <laughs> up the stairs? Oh, yeah. I heard she ate shit. Oh, my God. Yeah. I feel... So, can, do you want me to... Tell, can, are we allowed to talk about it? Sure. I was... I could be humiliated. <laughs> I could deal with it. Total sidebar. I was up... We were at work the other day. I was up in the office talking to our boss. My back was to the stairs, but, like, turned to the side. And I heard it more than I felt it. The seismic activity. It was like a. <laughs> it was like someone dropped a bag of cement. Oh like, my god! It was like. <laughs> it was like. There was doom. no bounce. It was just no. de- like a dead. And I just turn and I look down and there's Piper. It's a bowl of hair. <laughs> laying, like like flat. Like she like. She was flat. Like, <laughs> what happened? Did you miss the stairs? To the floor. Like, thankfully, her hands caught her. I was actually so afraid that she like broke a nail <laughs> or hurt her hands. Yeah, like jammed her fingers. No, because that that could hurt. Yeah. Light as a feather, stiff as a board. But it's, it's three small steps or two. Who's counting? It doesn't matter. Anywho, Piper didn't count them because she went right <laughs> over them. Um, but as soon as I picked you up, you're like, right? You're right. You're like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Then I left. No, because because yeah, do the we we rewatched huh? the, the check in. Yeah, and then I rewatched the yeah, the camera footage. <laughs> we we rewatched the camera footage, and on one of the cameras, you just see my legs stick out, and it's, like the fucking Wicked Witch of the West went like I know. Witch of the East. They started to curl up. Yeah, yeah, just let, let, like like give me like, the like, Doc in, <laughs> let, like in the fucking um Wizard of Oz when like the Wicked Witch of the East, like you just see her it's legs under the house. house. Yeah, yeah, she's, like, she's crushed. Yeah, but in the other camera footage, like you just see because it's like dark and i was wearing a dark shirt so you couldn't really see a whole lot but you just see like this mass of hair just whip <laughs> yeah and you just see me and it's like the frame by frame of the you camera. see my like me slowly react my body just shifts a little bit to the side <laughs> and i just look down <laughs> and then i was like all right i just helped her out. Oh but i was God. all fine i was, it was fine so funny uh, no broken nails no broken i've done limbs. that but i did that running one but, time no i went to run away from somebody because it was, a, it was like a super annoying person that comes in. Mm. And I was like, fuck you guys, every man for himself. <laughs> and I fucking ran. My foot got caught on the, the, the second to bottom um, step. Uh-huh. I went flying. Into the office? Oh, yeah. Like, hands to carpet. Slid. <laughs> like, but, and, then, <laughs> and then one of our coworkers was like, oh, my God, are you I'm like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I got away from her. It's fine. He's but like, honestly, honestly, those no. stairs are like so fucked up. Like it's a rite of passage at that job. Like you haven't worked there I'm, until you've fallen on those no, stairs. One, yeah. <laughs> like think, embarrassing shit happens to me constantly. Someone oh, yeah. tell me that the office chair, like the computer chair was broke. I sat in it. And then next thing you know, I'm almost on the ground. Thankfully, someone else was in the office and they caught me. But, Scary shit. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll be, what go- a we'll be going for a while. It's a... Uh, Get back on track so good. there. Yeah. We'll do, because I have three more, but I'll cut it down to the two. I'll do the short one, and then we can go right well, into we're gonna, it. We can, these are going to be episodes that we, we do more than once. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. So, because that, with the other, like the second one, that's a little long, but not like as long as the, the one I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. That one's fucking awesome. Because it's like, the ending is very like, what the fuck? Like, it's, it really is a really sick ending, and I love mm-hmm. it. Okay. Um, But that one, yeah, that one is called The Basement. By the way, oh, it's ten forty one already. Yes, yes. So I will get. Well, I will get moving. Um, this one is called Spiders. You know how I love spiders. Them. Ooh. Contrary to what you think, mm-hmm. it has nothing. It's, okay. It's okay. more of an example of what not to be afraid of, kind of thing. Okay. 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 Spiders. There was something about spiders that creeped Billy out. He just didn't know what. Me too, King. What Billy did know was at six years old, he had to be a big boy now. That's what dad said. He always told Billy to face his fears, whether it be spiders or monsters under the bed. So Billy tried to be like his dad. Dad always told him, Billy, there are scarier things in life than spiders. 
Billy hated waking up in the middle of the night. His room was pitch black. He could see a thousand prickly spiders coming for him. He could feel their tiny legs pin pricking his skin. Billy pulled the bed covers tighter. He blinked hard one, two, three times to clear his head. He thought of dad. What would dad do now? Dad wouldn't be scared. Dad told him the only thing scary about the dark is your imagination. There's nothing there. And his eyes adjusted to the dark. Billy realized. There's nothing there. Thinking of his dad, Billy swung his legs over the edge of the bed and grabbed his plastic sword from the floor. He brandished it in the air, swishing it around for good measure. I'm not scared. Billy began dueling with imaginary monsters, vanquishing them with his new ally, his imagination. Come out then, you stupid monsters. Billy took another step at the air. I'm not scared of you. Okay then, Billy, said a voice from under the bed. I'm coming. Ew. Not, not coming like that. He's coming... No, wait, I'm He's sorry. He's coming I was, out. I, I mean, not coming out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Son of I'm gay. Son of gay. <laughs> yeah, see, like, we got we to gotta change the vernacular of some of these things. I'm sorry. Like, I'm still tainted no, you're from not Rip wrong. being here last time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that fucked me. Imagine that. That was... Uh... Okay, then, Billy. Nope. I, I'll, for, I'll never forget that fucking line. I remember I read that. And I was like, mm-hmm. get fucking real. <laughs> get real. Get real, bro. Okay. Th- like, he's like, ch- it's like a feast... You're fucked, bro. Nope. And that's not your imagination. That's f- something tangible. Piper's that's like trying physical. to play footsies with me under the table. With her, with her size fours. <laughs> that was spiders. My tiny ass feet. She's like, do you want to hold pinky toes? Mm. <laughs> good now, job, Christopher. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yes, you. Yes, good job. And I I can find out for next episode, because mm-hmm. a lot of these are copied and pasted naturally. Copy pasta, yeah. creepy pasta. So a lot of these do have like public authors, like, you know, whether mm-hmm. it's like their handle or their actual name. Oh, definitely get their names and we can give them yeah. proper credit. Just so yeah. you because especially if you like the story, then it's cool to see what else they've made. You know, if you, if you like the way they portray, you know, storytelling and stuff, it's it's cool to know that who they are. Tumblr is rife with oh, creepypastas. I know. Oh, I know. I'm sure. Yeah. Among Tumblr, other AO3, Wattpad, I... Know all of it. You oh, you the write the so good. you write the smut pasta. <laughs> smut pasta. The pasta smut. Sounds delicious. Okay. Um, but this story, now the story I'm going to show you. Mm-hmm. This is, I don't think really anyone knows who wrote this story. It was just posted like anonymously by someone on I don't know what channel it came from or what website it was. Okay. Or if it was even, I don't even know how old this story is. All I know is that there is some green text in there, um, which I would assume is probably from the last like decade or so, or maybe more, but I don't know when this story came out. I just know when I started hearing about it, like when I saw people start doing videos, whether it's narration or just like breakdowns, but this is one of my favorite stories of all time. There have been student films made with this as like a model, mm-hmm. but they're just, come on guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like seriously, it's, it's like sometimes people just bite off way more than they can chew well, it's like with what they got but not often like achieved ne- kind of yeah, thing. Ne- like they, it lacks what it, it does lack do not cite the deep magic to me which I was there when it was you written <laughs> at least every other episode I do I do but I, I like <laughs> yeah no we got this we got this um but this story is called the Anasi's Goat Man okay and I don't okay. know if you guys have heard this story before but this is, this is one of my favorites. Sorry. And I'm going to read it like this. There's a little bit of green text. Mm-hmm. So the way it's worded might be a little weird. It's like, uh, it's like bullet pointed. It's kind of like bullet pointed. Yeah. Like, okay. And it's, it's essentially coming from personal experience. It's just a quick setup of the story. This is the Anasi Goat Man. B16. Be black and have a family down in Alabama. They farm and own a huge amount of land down in Huntsville. Also, shouts at the, Hun- uh, the Huntsville camping trip. That's another good story. Uncle owns a big house and a bunch of trailers they put out in the woods for hunting and camping. Down south, cousins suggest we go there to camp. No, I'm a city kid from Chicago, so they tease the fuck out of me. Collect food, kill a pig and some chickens, and bring necessities to camp for a few days. We get to the camp, and it's obvious something is weird. 
air has this weird electric smell, like right before a, st a storm, like owns ozone. We think nothing of it and unpack and go down to a little creek to swim for a few hours. All of a sudden, some older white guy and a white teenager come out of the bushes. He has a shotgun in the crook of his arm and says hello and asks us what we're doing this far back in the woods. I tell him about my uncle, who he knows, and say we're camping out. He tells us we need to be real careful out here and stick together. There was a big animal in the woods. His son, who is my age, asks if he can stay and hang out with us. He says okay. So we ended up playing football, digging around with me. There's the white kid Tanner, five of my cousins, then four of their friends. In total, there were five girls and six boys. We were all around 15 to 17. So five girls, six boys, it's 11 people. We ended up just dicking the day away. Mm -hmm. So we head back to the camp and uh, pulling out some stuff for the campfire, even though the trailers both had kitchenettes. Tanner says that his family's property sits up against my uncle's. He wants to run home and ask his dad if he can come out camping with us. My cousin Rooster says he's going with him since it's going to get dark soon. One of the girls also wants to tag along. It's about 7 o'clock and it's starting to get pretty dark. They take the flashlights and take the trail toward Tan's property. The rest of us chill. We make some s'mores, drink, and kiss on the girls. About 30 or 40 minutes later, there's a smell of ozone again. You could smell it like you could smell it over the fire we had started. This really nasty, coppery smell, like right before you've had a nosebleed or after it stopped. It wasn't exactly like dried blood. It was like that nasty, metallic, back-of-your-throat smell. We immediately think that it's some kind of electric malfunction or someone left a hot plate on or some shit. We searched. A stroke. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. That's what I was thinking that's, too. I'm like, I never thought of that. <laughs> yeah, I, that's really interesting. They say if you yeah. smell like burnt toast or like, or like a electrical. weird smell like that, yeah, like yeah. A burning. That yeah. That's okay. fucking interesting. I that's, never. That's I horrifying. Like, yeah. What are yeah. those things giving everyone a stroke? Okay. Well, Jesus Christ. I don't know. Okay. Um, we search the trailers and nothing is on, and we can still smell it. All of a sudden, we hear people booking down the path toward us, and Rooster, Tan, and the girl all come running into the clearing, out of breath. They don't even break stride. They all run into the trailer, right by where the fire is. We all get the fuck out of there and into the trailers. They end up calming down. Even Rooster is fucking crying his eyes out at this point. All the while, the fire is guttering lower and lower. So my other cousins say fuck it, and are about to go outside and get the generator out of the shed between the trailers. Tanner goes, fuck no, lock the fucking door, ain't nobody going outside. He's been crying too, and his eyes are bloodshot and puffy, and his pants are as dirty as shit. Maybe the smell is coming from him. <laughs> <laughs> I shit my fuck, I, I swear I saw something, dude, I shit my fuck. It's like, the fuck Yeah, way to deflect. I shit my fucking pants. They're, they're all looking outside, they think the thing is coming closer, but it's just because he's finally in the trailer with everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's in here with us. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, help me. <laughs> he goes on to tell us they went up to the house. His father said, sure, he can go out camping. But to make sure they were careful on the way back. And that maybe he should take one of the hiding rifles in, uh, just in case. Mm -hmm. mm. Evidently, Tanner had, been, uh, Tanner had seen something in their yard a few days before. One of the pigs had come up ripped up and half eaten. They assumed it was just some big cats or coyotes, even though they don't usually fuck with the live animals. He had gone upstairs and packed his stuff and told his dad they would be okay without the rifle because coyotes avoid people. So they started walking back toward um, where we were camping. So Rooster finally starts, uh, stops crying and shaking. The girl already had, but she was just staring out the window with a dumb look on her face. He says they had gotten halfway into the woods toward the camp when they started to hear shit in the forest. It was almost pitch black by this time, so they weren't sure at first what the fuck it was. The girl says that she heard something in the bushes right off the trail and they all beamed their flashlights over there and there was someone standing in the back of the woods in a little hollow. Rooster said they shouted at him and told him he was scaring the fuck out of them and what a dick he was. He says that when he realized that the guy was facing away from them, that's when he realized the guy was facing away from them. 
So they kept walking, and they start smelling this nasty, coppery ozone smell. They say that they look off into the forest on the opposite side, and it's a dude standing in the forest, backwards, slightly closer to the path. So now they start power walking, and Tan keeps going, I should have taken the fucking rifle. As they're telling the story, the smell is still super strong inside the cabin. They say that after they started walking faster, a kind of low gibbering had started coming from both sides of the wood. And as they started booking it back to the trailer, the girl said that she had flashed her flashlight out into the woods to the side of them and had seen something jerking itself through the woods. The gibbering just got louder and louder. And when they could see the light from the campfire, something had come out into the woods about 40 yards behind them onto the track. And they just flat out ran as hard as they could to get to the trailer. So we're out in the fucking woods. And we're assuming that at this point, it's just some rednecks or some shit trying to fuck with us. All of a sudden, my other cousin, Junior, starts going on about how we went to school with a native kid that was telling him about the goat man or some shit. We promptly tell him to shut the fuck up because we don't need any spooky talk right now. But he just keeps going on and on about how it's the fucking goat man and how we're in his woods and blah, 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 blah. Now, at, a, at the time, I had never heard of this goat man or anything like that. But then a couple years ago, the year before I graduated from college, I had a menom um, for a roommate, and I ended up asking him about it. And to sum it up, it's basically a fucking man with the head of a goat, and he can shapeshift, and he gets among groups of people to terrorize them. Um, if the show Supernatural has taught me anything about those creatures, it's that you need silver s- silver bullets and really? silver weaponry to kill them. Why is it always silver? Because they're allergic to Because they it. don't look good in gold. Yeah. But you know what's crazy, too? I heard that germs, like, like germs survive, like, the, the they, just, they die the quickest on silver, out of all metals. Hmm. If you put, like, illnesses and viruses, apparently, on that shit, they, for some reason, it just kills them. But they didn't know that back then, when, like, vampire folklore was written and shit, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Fucking weird. Um, we don't need any spooky talk right now. Keeps going on about how it's the fucking goat man. Um, and to sum it up, it's basically a fucking man with the head of a goat and he can shape shift and he gets among groups of people to terrorize them. It's also supposed to be kind of like the Wendigo. And it's bad mojo to even talk about it and even worse if you see it. Keep in mind, I didn't know this back when I was 16. So my cousin is going... The goat man's going to get in and fucking get us. The girls are all terrified, and my cousins and I are fucking trying to figure it out. If it's just some hillbillies or if it's some animal. So all of a sudden, the smell just goes away. Like, to this day, I haven't even experienced anything like it. Like, smells usually fade away or lessen. It was just literally there one second and then not the next. So it's after an hour, making it around uh, 9 or 10. We stopped shitting bricks enough to go back outside and stoke the fire again. We figured it was just some assholes trying to fuck with us, so we didn't go back home, but because if we think we do, they'll just chase us through the woods or some crazy shit. Nothing else weird happens that night, and we stay another night. And for the main part of the night, nothing happens. At about 1 in the morning, we're outside getting drunk and telling ghost stories. As someone is finishing some too spooky story, I don't remember what it was about, but the smell comes back. And it's so fucking strong that one of the girls literally starts vomiting. I stand up, and you can actually feel how clammy the air is. I say we should get inside, and this isn't right, and we should have just fucking left. We all go back inside, and we're standing around. My cousin just keeps going on about how it's the fucking goat man, and my cousin Rooster tries to shut him the fuck up. And all the while, I'm just feeling that is something is wrong, and I just can't figure out what it is. We end up sitting for a while, The smell is just as strong, and we're terrified and all huddled in this camper. We ended up cooking brats for everyone because nobody wants to go outside. It's one of those packs with four brats. We have a total of three packs, so it's 12. Right. Um, I grill them all up uh, on the stove to give everybody a hot dog. I get mine. After a while, one of my cousins goes up and goes to the pot for another one. He starts grumbling about how how I got two brats and everyone else only got one. And I look at him like he's fucking stupid. I tell him that everyone got one because there was 12. If he wants more, he should open up a new pack and cook more. 
that's when the girl that had been out with Rooster and Tanger starts screaming, Oh, Jesus, oh, Lord, get it out. She's crying and shivering, and then it dawns on the cousin standing up, what the fuck is wrong? Me and him both glance around the room, and then I feel my heart fucking sink. I run the fuck out of the cabin, and the girl runs out with us. The trailer door is banging against the side of the trailer as everyone books it out of the cabin. One of the cousin's friends asks us what the fuck is wrong. I start counting us. There's only 11 now. I shit Uh you not, my cousin verified. There had been 12 people in the cabin. But being that everyone didn't really know each other very well, nobody had noticed the whole fucking time there was an extra person. And then I realized earlier that I kind of noticed something was off. You know how you're just dicking around and having a good time and you don't sweat the smallest shit and you don't always keep track of certain stuff? I'm dead sure that someone else was in the trailer with us and that they had been there for at least a fucking day eating with us. What makes it worse, I could almost figure out which one it was, um, but I because I don't think anyone ever actually interacted with that person or the goat man. The girl kept praying to Jesus, and we're all sitting outside. Oh, pfft. That fucks me up, dude. Like the, it's like he could tell because there was one person that no one was talking to. Mm-hmm. Like that's like. I'm sorry. No. You don't think so? No. You don't think that's creepy? You're in like a trailer, right? Yeah. There's probably one toilet. You're all set. Like, you mean to tell me like at some point I was like, who the fuck's in the bathroom? Well, think about it. If everyone's in a panic, you could slip in well, easily. I think we all know like what's really the, going the on The copper there. smell was ta- was Brewster. He shit his no. pants. Open the door. Or we I'm know who it is. Can you imagine? Through your windows, you dumb whore. <laughs> There's a part <laughs> in the story that's going to be perfect for that, but that is fucking. That's horrifying. There, imagine oh, if it was Doctor Shark. If it was oh, Doctor no. Phil that was haunting the cabin. <laughs> you're just, fuck that. You're just, what you need to do here? <laughs> fuck me. Okay. The girl kept praying to Jesus, and we were all sitting outside. Eventually, we get big ass sticks and go back into the cabin, but there's nobody in there. We count again, and there's 11 people. We go back into the trailer and lock the door. We explain what the fuck happened, and the girl said she realized too, and that there were, uh, and then, and that's when he was about to say something. The person sitting next to her grabbed her leg hard and leaned over toward her and said something she couldn't understand. So we are pretty much scared as fuck as we huddle together, and I fall asleep. When I wake up, the sun is just coming up, and half the people are asleep and the other half are packing our shit up. We all want to walk back home. But like four people want to stay until the sun is all the way up, and some people think we're just fucking sitting around and still want to stay at the trailers. Like, I just want to get the fuck out of the woods. The girl's name was Kira, uh, the one that the goat man had touched. Anyway, I asked her if she really thinks it was something bad, and she says she just wants to go home and she doesn't want to be out in the woods alone for another night. So we decided to split up, the four that want to go can go, but I have to stay because I have the keys to the cabin and it's my uncle's and I have to lock up. I'm super pissed at this point because I feel like people aren't taking this shit seriously and I definitely do not want to be out in the woods for another night. I spend the rest of the day trying to convince the rest of the people, now four girls, four guys, eight, mm-hmm. to get the fuck out of Dodge. Does this d- like dwindled all the way down to one? No. I was going to say, Jesus Christ. No, no, it's one of those. <laughs> um... Tanner leaves them to go get a rifle, and he said he's coming back. So there are just seven of us left by 4 p.m. At around 5 p.m., he hasn't made it back yet. And we're getting extremely fucking antsy. And the only reason I stopped begging him to go back was because he went to get a gun. It's about 5.30 or so p.m. When one cousin, when the one cousin that did stay says he's, the girl Kira is outside. It's about, sorry. It's about 5.30 p.m. or so when the one cousin that did stay says the girl Kira is outside. We all look outside, and sure enough, she's standing by the fire pit with her back to the cabin. I'm thinking to myself, if she was so fucking scared, why the hell would she come back? And then I get this nasty feeling in my gut. Keep in mind, the whole time the coppery smell is gone. Now I realize I can smell just a twinge of it. I say this to the rest of them and everyone. And uh, I say this to the rest of them and everyone, and these are the people that wanted to fucking stay out in the woods after we had a goat man in our midst, are laughing at me and asking if I set this up to scare them. 
I'm looking at them like I'm not fucking bullshitting you right now. I asked them why the fuck would I play like that. So one of the girls goes outside to get Kira. She gets halfway to her and stops cold. Kira starts heaving. And I don't know how to, I don't know how the fuck to describe it. Sort of like someone with their back turned was laughing without actually making any sound. And it was this fact that made me realize there was not a fucking sound in the whole woods. It was dead silent. This was like later in September, so it was still fairly hot at the time, but it was super chilly some days too. You can usually hear big ass geese honking or some kind of birds or squirrels ch chit chatting. So I step out of the door and I tell her to come back into the trailer right fucking now. She backs up into the trailer and we lock the fucking door. We pull down all the shades except one and put a guy in a chair to watch her. She stands there for another 20 minutes or so. The guy turns to say that she's still there and there's a huge fucking bang at the door. <coughs> we all jump the fuck up and scramble around the living room. The banging is super fucking loud. So now my cousin is holding one of the girls and the other two are kind of giggling with nervous laughter and me and the other two guys are shitting bricks. <laughs> then we hear Tan, he's screaming. Let me the fuck in. Stop fucking playing. God damn it. That's where I should have did it. You see? Yeah. yeah. Can I so, just, okay. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, I'll set it up again. No, just, okay. Let's just do, <laughs> for, please, yeah, humor yeah. me. Yeah. And then oh. we hear Tan, he's screaming. Open the door or I'm going to throw rocks through your windows, you dumb whore. Thank you. So we go over to the door and open it, and he stumbles in with a rifle. There's nobody else outside. You said, wait, what? Never mind. No, you're good. Evidently, he had walked up to the campsite. Nothing weird happened in the forest, but he had seen a girl. Mind you, he said it was not Kira standing there. When he had gotten to the edge of the clearing, she had turned toward him with a slack-jawed look and just stared at him down, slowly tracking him as he walked around the outside of the clearing towards the camp. He said it wasn't until he was almost halfway to the trailer he had realized that she was getting closer to him. She had started off by the fire, and without him even seeing her move, she had been turning, inching closer. He said... He just ran the rest of the way back to the cabin, thinking it would open. And when he got to the door, it was locked. He turned around, and it was about half the distance to the door. He looked around the room, and then gets super pale. He pulls me to the side and whispers, You know there's only seven in, in here, right? You know there's only seven in here? <laughs> Sorry, fucked it up. You, you know there's only seven of us in here, right? Okay. I get that feeling where your stomach drops to your nuts. It had been back inside the trailer while we were all sorting out who was going where and when we were all when we all went outside to talk earlier in the day it just slipped right back in. We looked out the window and there is nobody out there. So we recount everyone and then basically I go over and ask everyone how many people were here earlier. Everybody says 8. I say, "Well, how many are there now?" They all do the count and then realize there are only now 7 people in the cabin. So Tan had brought back a couple boxes of ammo and his rifle. And he had told his dad that there was some kind of animal in the forest because he didn't think his dad would believe him if he said it was the goat man. He says that his cousin is supposed to be coming down in a few hours and that in the morning we can all go back to his place and his cousin will drive us home. Now I'm really fucking terrified. But I at least feel better because we can be American and shoot the fuck out of whatever it is if it comes back. <laughs> But then my cousin gets into this huge argument with one of the girls because she thinks that I'm trying to be funny and prank them and that she's getting really scared and that I'm not funny. He keeps telling her that I'm not the kind of person she says or and, and she says, well, how do we know the girl wasn't just Tanner in a wig or if it's really the goat man, how do we know that this is real, uh, you know, and Tanner and that the goat man didn't just kill Tanner in the woods and take his gun. So we fucking get into a huge argument about this where me and Tan are like, we could seriously be in danger uh, because at the very least, someone has been sneaking themselves into our fucking trailer without us knowing and mingling with us. And at worst, sneaking something, dogs. So, sneaking <laughs> brats, something bad is in the fucking forest with us. One of the girls is crying and saying she wants to go right now. And we're trying to tell her we shouldn't because none of us are walking through the woods in the middle of the night. At this point, the sun is starting to go down, and it's getting a little cloudy out. 
We eat something and turn on the radio for a while, but we can't really get a station out there with anything decent. So we turn it off uh, about the time that Tan's cousin shows up. He was 19, I think. At this point, the sun is just barely over the horizon, and he was uh, one of those heavy-duty... He has one of those heavy-duty lantern flashlights and another rifle. He walks to the trailer, and uh, he, we whisper to Tan, asking if he's sure that's his cousin, and he says yes. The guy looks behind him and all around the camp, and then walks in. He kind of glances at all of us and looks a little confused. He says, Where's your other little buddy at? I figured she would meet up with me at the cabin. Is she a little slow or something? He also asked whether we had been cooking blood in the cabin, because it smelled like blood and hot pans all the way up the trail. We were all like, fucking, nope. But yes, I use it as my pasta sauce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we ask uh, him what the fuck he's talking about and what girl he saw. He had come down the same trail Tan had been using, and he had come up on one of Yu's guy's buddies, standing in the middle of the trail, looking at him slack-jawed. He asked her a bunch of questions, but all she did was just look at him. Then she smiled at him, and he kept walking. She couldn't seem to keep up with him and kept lagging a little behind. He said uh, he asked her if she was hurt or something and if she needed any help, but she continued to stare. Eventually, he had been walking and turned around uh, a bend in the trail, but when he turned around and went back to see if she was okay, the trail was empty. He assumed she had taken some sort of shortcut through the woods out to the trailer. We tell him the whole story about what's been going on. I half expected him to say we were full of shit, but he just listened and then sat down on the couches in the living room. Tanner's cousin gets back to the girl. He says when she kept trying to lag behind him, it kind of weirded the fuck, weirded him the fuck out. So he tried to keep her in front of him, but no matter how slow he walked, she was always lagging a little behind. And then he smelled this nasty smell, and it got stronger as he got to the camp. Eventually it got really strong. She had said something really low that he didn't catch, and when he turned around, she had been right the fuck on him, and he stepped back from her. Oh, sweetheart. At this, <laughs> it was at this point he asked her if she was okay, and if she wasn't. Him, uh, and if she, was, and if he, she wasn't, he would carry her back the rest of the way, but she just kept staring. He said he reached out to her as in to grab her on the shoulder, but he must have misjudged the dif- distance because she was off to the side of him where he put his hand, like she had moved while he was looking dead at her. So at this point, we know this shit's real, unless Tan is playing a joke, which we can tell he's not because he's almost pissing his pants. They load up the rifles, we eat some more, and we just kind of sit around until about 11. To this fucking day, every time I think about this, I really pray to God it was just some huge prank that my cousins played on me, and I just never realized. Uh, and it was never revealed, so I wouldn't shit, or so I would shit for the rest of my life. At around 11 o'clock, the stink of copper turns into an actual, nasty, gross, blood-like smell, like cooking blood in singed hair. Tan and his cousin, Reese, get the fuck up instantly and grab the rifles. There is like a half knocking, half clawing at the door. And I shit you not, there's this voice. And it's... Open the door. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Sorry. That's right. (laughs) Every time Chris rephrases the story, you're just going to think of Dr. Bill. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it's kind of ruined the story for me forever. No, it's funny. Because that's almost scarier than... than He's still wearing a suit, too. He's haunting you, and he's yeah. also telling you how to live your life. Yeah. Just so judgmental. God. You just, you just open your door, and he just, like, turns on your, like, porch light, like, somehow from the outside of your house, and he's just like, oh, no. How do you feel about this? How does it make you feel? He's just like, oh, my fucking God. I'm going to send you to that ranch, uh, the, that rehabilitation <laughs> ranch that I got. Yeah. Uh, okay, sorry. Go. No, it's fine. It's fine. Um. But this is like one of my favorite like lines of imagery and like any story. I fucking love this part. Okay. There's like this half knocking, half clawing at the door, and I shit you not, there's this voice. And it sounds like when you see those YouTube cats and dogs whose owner teaches them how to talk, 
it says in this halting, weirdly toned voice, let me the fuck in, stop fucking playing. It made my fucking nuts creep up against my body. And one of the girls starts crying and calling on Jesus. It was so obviously not a fucking person talking. It didn't have the right cadence. And that's some shit I never realized until that moment. But all people have a certain cadence when they talk, no matter what language. All people have a certain rhythm when they talk. This shit didn't have any kind of cadence or rhythm. One of those YouTube cats, that's what the fuck it sounded like outside the door. So now I'm in full terror mode. We keep yelling outside, who is it? Stop fucking around, man. And it just keeps saying in or let me the fuck in for almost 15 minutes. It sounded like this almost just not funny. Oh, it's the link. To, it's actually a link. Sorry for being on a tangent, but if you can't imagine how this shit sounded, then you can't imagine how fucked up the whole situation was. So then the smell goes away for a while, and for the next hour or so, you can hear someone basically creeping around the woods and shit. Every couple of minutes, it'll come back to the door and say something. Finally, the smell fades away. It's around 2 in the morning right now. Ree says, man, fuck this, and opens the door and walks outside with the rifle. He fires a shot into the air and says something to the effect of, in the name of Jesus, go away. He fires two more times, and then from the woods right up against the river, across from the trailer, it sounds like something is slowly gibbering and hooting. Then it starts screaming, and it sounds almost like a woman and a cat stuck in a bag together, screaming. Like, I seriously have never heard any shit like that, and you can hear the brush over the way start to shake. Reese fires over into the tree line and then starts backing into the house. We lock the door, and we can hear this shit keening and screaming. Reese says something had come out of the bushes slowly, super low to the ground and crawled toward the cabin. He shot at it. Pretty much that was how the rest of the night went. It was literally screaming constantly for the next two hours, and we could hear shit moving out in the tree line. But it never came back up to the cabin until everyone had finally fallen asleep. Tan had begun sitting in a chair. Uh, Tan had been sitting in a chair watching the door with his rifle. Nobody else heard or saw this, and he told me two days later, after the whole thing was over. He had been nodding off after the screaming and noises finally stopped, and he had been almost asleep when he saw someone come out of the bathroom and lay down in the middle of the floor and go to sleep. He assumed it was just one of us, and he had nodded off. Then he said he kind of realized something was wrong, and while we pretended to sleep, or, and while pretended to sleep, he counted us. There was nine people in the cabin. He basically didn't want to try to shoot at the fucking thing in the cabin and have it all kill us then and there, or have Reese wake up and start shooting and then we all kill ourselves. So we just stayed awake all night, pretending to be asleep. He said sometimes it would stand up and kind of do this weird jittery thing or heave like it was laughing, and then it would lay back down. The story closes pretty weak, because from my perspective, nothing happened. We just woke up. And I noticed that Tan was a little jittery, and that he was avoiding look at all, looking at all of us. But we ate some breakfast, packed up, and started walking to his house. He stayed last in the cabin and said he'd lock up and bring my uncle's keys to just start walking and he'd catch up, which I really didn't want to fucking do. We got a little up, bit up the path when he came running up. Basically, we just jogged all the way back to the house, and his cousin took us home. There was a window in that bathroom. Tan had gone back to lock up and looked in there. We were too fucking stupid to lock the screenless window. The window was fucking up when he went in there. I'm guessing it had been doing that all along, waiting for us to fall asleep or slip up, and then getting in among us. It walked with us all the way goddamn back to his house, and then he said it lagged to the back of the group, looked him dead in the eyes, and walked into the woods. Ooh. Ooh, good job. I fucking, spooky. that's one of my favorite stories of all time. That, I would have went home immediately, though. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be like, yeah, you know, mm-mm. I feel mm-hmm. like, I feel like, like the first red flag, I would have been like, 
Yeah, nope. goodbye. I'm already on the edge being in the woods. So like, I, like, like, I will like like thanks, oh, but thanks, but no thanks. Like, and that thing just coming and pulling up some rug and like I'm gonna just take a nap here. Is like, that fucking like? Imagine like, having what? to sit there and like pretend you're sleeping and you're watching this person that you know is not part of your group. But they just, were all awake watching him, right? No, he, he. It was just the one. He he was like pretty much took the position of I'm gonna stay up and like watch everyone. Yeah. I'm just gonna stay and watch everyone and just make sure everyone's asleep. Everyone goes to sleep. He starts nodding off, right? But he woke back up and he's like, oh, maybe while I nodded off, someone got up from the floor and went to the bathroom. But then he started counting everyone. And the last time in the story they checked, like, it was four women, four don't boys. Don't eat the brats. Yeah, yeah don't eat the brats. That, that's <laughs> fucking crazy. How do you make a hot dog scary? I don't know. You know, know what I'm saying? I don't know. Like where you, you're like, there, I made 12. I opened three packs because there was 12 of us. And then you're like, why is there an extra hot dog? Like. Oh, they're what? Like. Yeah, I don't know. It's fu- and even like the the imagery, like the, you know, like the singed, like the singed hair, cooking blood, the fucking YouTube cats and dogs. Ugh. Like, can you imagine the sound of something outside this door right now? Yeah. That sounds like a husky trying to talk. <laughs> and oh, trying like, to. See, I don't no, oh, like that one on fucking YouTube. Like what yeah, the, oh, like like the cats. Fuck and, the me, cats I'd be under the table. Like, Hi, Yes. You guys are being like, oh, Long Johnson. I saw, yeah. I saw this piano. One video of this cat. I saw this one video of this cat, mm-hmm. and he, and like you and the owner like rounds the corner, and you just and he's like a like an orange tabby cat. He mm-hmm. looks a lot like red. Okay. And he goes and he goes, well, hi. Oh. I have seen that one. I have seen oh, that one. That sounds so cute. Yeah. Where is it? Um, I saw it on I TikTok. I want to see it right like now. I just want to say cats compilation. I just want to say. I think I reposted it. Before we move okay. on, I want to say one of my favorite parts of that story mm-hmm. is. It's not even just the mimicry. It's not even just like this looked like Kira and now she's standing with her back to the cabin. Like you never see its fucking face. Which yeah. I love that. But it's the fact that it it heard one of the cousins. Remember when he was panicking, knocking on the door, it said, let mm-hmm. me the fuck in, stop fucking playing. Yeah. It said the same words thinking that that was like a password. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like, rep- yeah. like it saw that thing get in. It saw the cousin get into the cabin, but now it fucking, it's going to try to use the same thing. That is so fucking horrifying to me. Yeah, that, that, that I, is scary. That's one of my favorite stories of all time. All right. The well, Anasi Goat Man. Well done. Goat you did a great job. Thank you. Yes, incredible. You. We'll definitely do this again. Yeah, Hell the, yeah. The basement is awesome, too. I can't Chris's wait to do that Campfire one. Tales. Yes. yes. That should be the title. Well, that's... No, you that's want some we more? Were, that was one of the, the that's my categories model. that we were in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, we're, all right. We are... Can I name my segment? Yes. Yeah, what, what would you like to call it? I'll figure that out. Okay. Okay. I'm thinking of like a... Uh, uh, fringes. Sick fucking show of wonders. <laughs> and, yeah. And a uh, uh, gooch tangler. Mm. Yeah. Or like mm-hmm. a... um. <sighs> <laughs> okay. All right. We've been going for so long. Uh-huh. Um... I actually don't think we need to edit like anything. Yeah, is, yeah, we'll check it out. That's incredible. Yeah. So if you would like to follow us on mm-hmm. Instagram, we are at Coffee and Scream Pod. And we are also on Twitter at C Scream Pod. That's C the letter Scream Pod. Um, I actually never use it. So don't even follow it. <laughs> I don't know. It's there. I am it's there, there, though. I am on uh, Twitter at It's Just G. Um, you could also email me at coffee and screen podcast at gmail.com if you have case suggestions. If you would like to support the show, we are on buymeacoffee.com slash coffee scream one word. Uh, it's going to go towards new equipment and keeping us caffeinated. Thank oh, you. Yeah. And Christopher, would you like to talk about your show? Yes. Um, Twitch.tv forward slash wonder time theater. Uh, check me out Tuesdays, 7 o'clock p.m. Iconic. Usually like a five hour show. It's a long show. Mm-hmm. We show a lot of stuff. We're doing a lot of Christmas stuff this year. And uh it's a check good time. it out. Yeah. You'll love it in only three episodes or less. Piper, show me that cat video. I will. It's like a compilation of like cats talking and I just want the one. I just want the one real quick. Hold on. Yeah, now put insidious music over it. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Muffle it like it's behind a door. <laughs> and see me how you feel. Wait, hold on. Okay. And it's like a country. It's like, well, hi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all Long Johnson. No Don Piano. Yeah, yeah here. Yeah, here. Okay. Oh, here. <laughs> Is that crazy? Oh, my God. That well, was like, hi. Little, like Leslie Jordan and like an orange tabby. Yeah. Dude, that sounds like Paula Deen. Like, that's Paula oh, like, Deen. Right. Well, hi. Yeah. Yeah.
<laughs> All right. Well, on that Fuck note, that. everybody, stay safe, lock your doors, and we will be back next time. Have a great night. Have a great night. Bye. Bye. Bye.